We begin with the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
Let us pray. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The text for our sermon this morning comes from our second lesson from 1 Corinthians. Paul writes this, Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say, There is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true, that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins then those who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life we have only hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have died. Here ends the reading. You had one job. Have you ever heard that phrase, or even used that phrase before, you had one job. It is often uttered in response to somebody making a mistake that really seems quite evident to others. That something was done with obvious carelessness and without paying attention. It seems like an easily discovered and preventable mistake, whether it's in proofreading, whether it's in putting together something, whether it is in some basic task of life, and the person who was about doing it, for whatever reason, was certainly not paying attention. It is said or believed that the phrase perhaps originated in the famous movie Ocean's Eleven, starring George Clooney. It was uttered by actor Don Cheadle when he is frustrated at another member of his crew who are all together on a bank-stealing heist, and they successfully break into the vault only to hear the bank alarm go off because somebody had forgotten to shut it down. You had one job. Here are a few pictures that kind of bring home what that phrase is getting at. Today our second lesson again comes from Paul's first letter to the Christians in Corinth. In this 15th chapter, he writes those words that bear repeating. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised? And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testify of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you still live in your sins. 
than those who have died in Christ have perished. If for this only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. The Apostle Paul says, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. In other words, Paul is saying, as Christians, we have one job, one central foundation. When we think about what we hold core as a member of the Christian faith, it seems to me that the fulcrum of our theological work, of our, our liturgical practice, of all our church constitutions and policies, of our individual and collective beliefs, has at its fulcrum the news that the pro of that proclamation at the tomb. He is not here. He has risen. For as Paul makes the case here, while we can disagree on many other aspects of the practice and belief of the Christian faith, like whether one should be allowed to dance or not, whether one should be allowed to drink alcohol or not, whether one should be baptized or can be baptized with just a little bit of water versus being totally immersed, whether one is allowed to take communion, whether that communion can be grape juice or not, whether certain passages of Scripture should be interpreted this way or that way, Whatever those issues are that we often turn into dividing walls, when it comes to the resurrection of Christ, this teaching, exemplified in this passage, these words from Paul's pen should be what defines us as believers in the faith of Jesus Christ. This is our litmus test. This is why the church got started. This is why the disciples go from the upper room, hidden away from society, to, I don't care what you do to me, you can't take away this event that I have witnessed. This resurrection event is why people were willing to risk their lives, suffer persecutions, write letters and gospels that have become our scriptures, because they believe so adamantly that the man who was crucified on a Friday rose from the dead on a Sunday. They believed that our Creator God sent the Messiah, and in this person of Jesus, we have witnessed new life, that the one who was dead was alive again. This upsets the apple cart of mortality. This upsets the word of death. This breaks through every single human notion behavior, and barrier. This is the good news of the gospel. And when we keep this at our center, at our core, everything that then emanates from this event in history, this event in time, this event in God, this event in faith is crucial. The earliest version of the Christian creeds was not a three-paragraph Trinity version like we profess in the Apostles and Nicene Creed, the first creed was all started with three basic words. He is risen. When death is vanquished, when death is defeated, when the promise of new life comes to us, we are invited. We have the opportunity to put a new, on a new set of glasses, to see a life beyond our mortal being and begin to view the world differently. We can let go of whatever binds us. We can be found when we are lost. We can have the light of Christ shed light into any darkness that we may be experiencing. This is gospel. This is good news. And when we begin to see the world in this way, we can hear and view the teachings of Jesus, the life of Jesus, and the acts of Jesus in a different type of perspective. We can let them impact our viewpoints, our outlook on life today. How we approach other people, how we seek to love other people, how we act with other people is rooted in this central tenet of our faith. It was then that we turn to the Gospel of Luke, the appointed Gospel text for this day in that sixth chapter, and we get a glimpse perhaps of what Jesus is talking about 
when he utter phrases like, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, when they revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day. In other words, if Jesus died and rose again and gives new life to me, then Jesus died and gives the invitation of new life for all. We can build our core values. We can build our life direction. We can shape our life decisions and behaviors because the man who was put to death is alive again. The one who was crucified is resurrected. Paul is reminding the Christians in Corinth, despite whatever disagreements or arguments or viewed varied viewpoints that they may have had on any issue, the one thing that unites them is the life-saving event of the man who went to the cross. That if, as Christians, we want to throw out the resurrection, we are, of all people, most to be pitied. In our struggles and challenges of living out the Christian faith, here on February 13th, 2022, here the day before our country celebrates a kind of romantic love on that Valentine's Day, that often for many is met with more disappointment than joy, truth be told. We're often reminded instead of divisions, separation, isolation, or loneliness, that we as Christians are reminded that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. That the one who rose again from the dead, that even when we doubt this, even when along our faith journey, when this foundation, foundation sometimes feels shaken, even with the rationalizations of this world, with its bad news and horrible tragedies, with its indignant human behaviors, even when we ourselves doubt that any of this could have really happened and could possibly be true, we cannot push away God. We cannot roll the stone back in front of the tomb. And for that, we say, thank God. God. For that, we can claim good news. So even as our faith life experiences the mountaintops and valleys and all the in-betweens, we do not let our disbelief, our perplexities, our shortcomings, our lack of understanding in the end disqualify us from God's amazing grace. We have one job, one job as believers trusting in the resurrection event of Jesus Christ. Amen.
let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of intercession. The Spirit of the Lord is poured upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Blessed are those who trust in you. Strengthen the faith of those who profess your name and bring reassurance to those who doubt or fear. Through your church, speak continued blessing into the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Those who trust in you are like trees planted by streams of water. Bless fruit trees with an abundant harvest. Protect rainforests from destruction. Restore land that is eroded after deforestation. Resurrect woodlands after forged fires. God of grace, hear our prayer. Search the hearts of those who govern, that they lead with humility. Inspire leaders to collaborate on policies that protect people and the planet. Sustain truth-tellers and social movements that challenge society to become more honest and just. God of grace, hear our prayer. Send your blessings of mercy upon those who long for consolation. Tend to those struggling with poverty, unemployment, or uncertainty. Provide for all who are hungry. Console those who face persecution. Grant peace to all who suffer. God of grace, hear our prayer. Renew this congregation in our shared mission. As we plan and dream for the future, you are preparing and inspiring us by examples of other saints before us and reformers, plus new projects and new ministry partnerships. God of grace, hear our prayer. Christ is raised from the dead, so we cling to the hope of resurrection. We praise you for the lives of saints who lived and died in the hope of eternal life with you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may God, who leads you in paths of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, Bless your going out and your coming in, today and forever. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.